This is Stu Strauss, the woodsman, and you're listening to Inspirato Projecto. Well, and being a slave to that past, you know, it's sure. crazy because, well, it's you know, he hasn't let it go. It's interesting because, you know, the way in which it is helpful by looking at the past is looking at ways in which, which is always exciting to me, the, the stuff that I bring into the present moments is going, well, it's it's worked in the past. You know, <laughs> here are all the examples of how of how I've, I've had some lofty idea and I say, OK, well, let's go with it. And. And I just have all those examples in my brain as to how that has worked out for me. So those are the ways in which I bring the past into the present. And it helps, big time. I'm not thinking about all the past uh, failures. I'm not thinking about all the times where people let me down. I'm not thinking about the times where, you know, whatever, whatever. I'm going, what's going to be helpful towards me right now and, and, and moving forward right now? Well, motivation, excitement, enthusiasm. And trusting that, well, you know what? Lightning does, doesn't just strike once. And especially when you got a whole examples of where it keeps striking, it'll keep, go, it'll keep going as long as we just keep allowing it. And the more that I keep uh, opening up to that idea, the more great stuff happens. And, and it, that's why it's so tricky to then join forces with those who are stuck in, in the past in the opposite sense, where they're going, well, what I see here reminds me of this terrible thing that happened. And, well, that didn't go right, so I better shut down this thing before it goes any further. Because, you know, chances are I can already see it going wrong. Great. You know, how helpful is that? Already seeing how it could go wrong and betting on it going wrong. My gosh. Unconsciously creating it. Yeah. What, the very thing you don't want. By focusing on it. By feeding the fire. You're feeding a fire when you're focusing on something that you don't want, which is really crazy because we've been so hardwired to focus on what's not working mm, and mm. focus on it so intently. And all we're doing is like adding another log to the fire that we're trying to put out. That's it. That's not how it works. So, I mean, there, it's, it's really simple, and it, to me, it's very clear that we, everything that we've been told and everything we've been given has been completely backwards, mm-hmm. and what it really is, what the truth of how all of this works, who we are, and what this thing called life is, and how they work together in harmony... And then all the complications that human beings have also constructed and invented just to make it even more confusing. So let's not only hardwire, you know, let's not only like teach you that everything is backwards, but now let's add a bunch of convoluted stuff that has nothing to do with anything (laughs) just to obscure your view even further. Right, right. And it's amazing. Do you think there's some sort of... um, I think I know what the answer is, but... (laughs) Why do you suppose people tend to err on the side of probability not working out? (laughs) Because they're trying to protect themselves, you know, and protect themselves from life. Yeah. But that's the thing, too. And this is why enlightened people laugh a lot, because they know it's not that significant. So life is a paradox and everything coexists at the same time. We're in a real sweet spot in our lives when we have that which we recognize as significant and insignificant at the same time. That's when life works. Mm And I think that's why comedy is so popular, because comedy takes the, the graveness of life, the seriousness mm. of life, the significance of life, and brings this lightness to it, this humor to it, this insignificance to it, and suddenly we feel so much better about the subject matter. Like offering us the opportunity to feel okay about some... Realize right, find that some way to redefine some kind of bit, maybe a bad situation, perhaps. There's truth in it that sets us free when we're laughing at it because 
they're bringing that level of insignificance to it. Mm, mm-hmm. You know, does that make sense? So yeah. they take something that everybody considers like maybe even a taboo subject. It's so significant, and then they they make. Uh, a joke about it and bring humor to it or, or shift it in a way that can be viewed in a light-hearted way allows you to see, you know, it's not all that important. Yeah. It's not as important as we made it out to be. Now we got a balance going on. Now we got a balance. Now we're looking at the significance and the insignificance at the same time. It's interesting. It reminds me of it's kind of like the jester or the jokers back in the day being able to get away with making fun of the king and queen because, oh, it's just a funny thing we're saying, but everyone knows what that person is saying is true. But, oh, ha, 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 we're all just laughing about this very truthful thing that we all know about. You know, <laughs> but, mm-hmm. there, but it's it's like it's like giving, how should I say, it's almost like a, it's like a, a get-out-of-jail-free card or something like that where it's you're not, you're not stuck in, in the prison of what that thing normally has definitions of. It's relief, mm-hmm. too. There's a lot of relief there, too, um, for that which is so heavy. Yeah, taking those chains off, you know, taking that baggage off and bringing a little balance into things, you know. So we're always striving for balance because we've already discovered that's what it's all about, is creating that balance but why do we still struggle in achieving that balance? Because we haven't been given any tools to work with mm-hmm. that would cause or promote that balance. What we've been given is everything that makes us swing like that pendulum from one extreme to the other. And we didn't know there's this center place, this third option. Because we go from one extreme, oh, that doesn't work. Let me try the other extreme. Well, that doesn't work. And then we give up, never realizing there's this third option that fits in the middle, this other dimension. And we've heard it said before over and over. We know it to be true to some degree. Mm -hmm. Obviously, too little food and too much food's no good right? It makes us not feel great, right? Just enough. Yeah, it's great. (laughs) Okay, so we've all experimented with all this stuff, but we still don't understand. We don't have the tools to access this this balance in life. And then once you do find it, you're like, oh my God, I can't believe it. I just found the portal. (laughs) I found the portal to how to live heaven on earth. Everything finally makes sense. All the clarity comes in, all the confusion goes away. And now I really get how all of this works together. And now it's like I have this freedom to be that creative person I am and to create the things that I actually intend to create, not the things that I don't. Wow, you know, heaven on earth, absolutely. I love it knowing that the, the, the true um, experience of one's reality lies in their choices to whether they want it to be a good reality or not isn't that that's like the crazy cosmic joke it's like you want to have a better life well it's up to you to define it right now you're the author of your story what kind of story are you going to write here you know what how are you going to view this how how light are you going to take this uh this uh you know this simulation or this video game that you're kind of walking around in right now how light are you going to take it the choice is yours (laughs) because whatever whatever you decide to hold on to is going to be the thing that the universe is going to go oh yes okay oh evidently you want that okay yes okay yes oh oh you want that all right okay yes and it keeps giving you more of that well i'm not good enough well yes well i'm just terrible you know i'm not i I, nobody's gonna like well yes you know it's just gonna go ahead and say yes to that stuff and how interesting is that to know that, holy cow, if, if every little kid was just simply taught that from the from the moment forward, you know, please keep more with that imagination, more with the, you know, lean heavier into the into that right brain create, creative thing and watch how your life unfolds for you. Mm-hmm. Holy moly, could you imagine how many happy, more happy kids would be out there? <laughs> and just, you know, not having to struggle to try to get into a college, but just knowing, okay, what college do you want to go to? All right, yeah, you'll, you'll get into that one. Just keep the momentum moving in that direction. I mean, it's incredible, all the stories that you've told me where 
you know, it may look like a wall or it may look like there's no way out, but then all of a sudden something, a secret door opens up that you didn't expect was there, and that leads you on a whole other path. Mm-hmm. It's so amazing. Well, we just saw that David Crosby documentary, Remember My Name, and that's the thing that that generation was discovering was creativity and not being imprisoned not being restricted and constrained Mm -hmm. and and following that creative side that we are as humans that was being so repressed prior to that period and but the only problem is again they went to the other extreme Mm. where's the balance they went to the other extreme and because of that people died Mm. destruction occurred so there was a lot of creativity that came out of it, but also at a cost when it didn't have to be. So, you know, where's that balance? Again, it was necessary. And again, human beings didn't, didn't find it. Mm-hmm. They mm-hmm. just went to the other extreme. And when? When are we ever going to really find it? We've got all the information at our fingertips. And we have the pathways and we have the maps. And we have the visionaries and we have the leaders. And we have the evidence. And we have the experiments called history to examine and learn from. But no, we'd rather just sleepwalk in life and complain about it. Mm. And complain about it. That's the irony of it. You know, if you're going to allow yourself to be hoodwinked and you're going to allow yourself to be asleep at the wheel of life, can you really complain that you're going to crash? That you're going to get into an accident? When it's totally up to you to wake yourself up, pay attention, wake up and access the things that, you know, are true. Everybody really wants it. They're just too asleep to even realize it sometimes. Mm -hmm. Except in the depths of pain, sometimes they think, God, I wish I had the answers. You know, and the answers are actually out there. The the ways are out there. But it's very true, you know, once the the pupil is uh, ready, the teacher will appear. If you really, if it's a burning desire, but it's just like anything. It's like bringing anything into your world or your existence. If you have a burning desire for something and, and, and it's authentic and it's true and it's genuine, you will, you will be led to that which you are seeking. No doubt about it. And the fun thing is, I realized that by trusting that process and trusting that uh, when you're tethered with that that true intention and that true authenticity um, it it really it's <laughs> that's where you want to be <laughs> when you're really when you're really dialed in with that connection holy cow everything just just flows right to you because you don't have that resistance right you're not you don't have the you don't have the... It's like the difference between having your... Uh, wait, did you tell me this analogy before? Like the hose. I remember, you know, like in uh, Chicago, we'd, you know, we'd water the lawn. But the hose, if there was a kink in it or someone's standing on it, you know, that, that water's not moving through. you got to have that, that clear passageway. Mm-hmm. And it's interesting the difference you can feel between one and the other. And especially when you got a group of people who are, you know, okay, let's keep opening up that, you know, how, how wide can we move this this passage of, of great uh, consciousness that's flowing through and how do we keep keep this moving and wow when you're in that things can just happen so easily and effortlessly harmoniously yeah if we're in har- if we're in harmony with each other of course you know united you can conquer and move forward and divided you just fall there's but everybody is a collective consciousness here. If we just take responsibility for just ourselves, mm-hmm. we have no idea. We're really not clear about how powerful we are. 
we really we really are not clear about that mm -hmm. but we make a huge impact on everyone and that person we make an impact on is going to make an impact on somebody else mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it will continue to go on and that's going to impact someone else and it just has this chain reaction it was interesting because when my client didn't call me for her coaching call and she got busy socializing friends from out of town vacation time all that good stuff and we had a call set up for 8 p.m. and then the next day I and I contacted her after she missed her call sent her a message saying mm. you know you realize you missed her call and I didn't hear from her till the next day but it was really interesting we had this whole discussion and I said, do you realize that just you not calling or messaging or letting me know or whatever had a huge impact? Like, you're not bad. You're not a bad person. You didn't do anything wrong. But I'm here just to enlighten you and let you know that there's all, that you make a difference. Mm -hmm. And that you being in communication makes a huge difference. Mm -hmm. And if you... If I, I was sitting there like waiting, literally, you know, waiting for the duration of that time that you were to call. Now, why didn't I call you before that time was up? Because that's my job as a coach is so allow you to initiate, you know, it's allowing you to be a leader, allowing you to be accountable, allowing you to be the one who is in charge of creating your life. Mm -hmm. And I wouldn't be if I was spoon feeding you. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. we don't, that's not how we live our lives with somebody spoon feeding us all the time. We have to be responsible for ourselves if we really want to have the power to be able to say, create the world that we want to live in for ourselves. And so uh, she had no clue. She had no idea mm. that it really made that kind of difference for her to be in communication. The truth be known, I had a friend who wanted to go see a film with me, mm. but I said no because I have a coaching call. So that impacted me going out, right? And then my friend who didn't go out because I couldn't go out. And there's a lot of things that happen. Like I said, I don't blame her. She's not bad. She's not wrong or anything. But it's just interesting to ex examine and observe mm -hmm. the impact we have on other people. We have no clue about it and the difference that also could have been made in our conversation. Breakthroughs could have been had. But we can't make up that mm -hmm. call. We can't go back in time. I have another friend of mine who's um, made a really good point. He said, you know, when I contact people and they don't get back to me, he said, the first thing I do is I imagine the worst. I imagine that I upset them, they don't like me, something's went horribly wrong because they didn't get back to me. Probably not the case, but that's how most people react, people not getting back to them. A lot of people do. Yeah, you've got some people who say, well, maybe they got busy and things like that. But there's a large majority of people who think that they must have done something wrong mm. to be ignored. People want to be accepted. I posted on Facebook, what is it the one thing that you want the most in life? And this guy answered, acceptance. He said, but I'm probably going to live my whole life and die before I'm going to feel that acceptance wow. that I would like to have. I said, it's interesting you should say that because there's only two things that fundamentally that we need as human beings for sustenance that's going to give us the foundation to be able to thrive and grow in our lives. And that's acceptance for who we are, mm -hmm. complete acceptance not that means sans judgment that mm -hmm. means no criticism and making a difference it's just two things and it's and it's amazing because it it's free and it's easy and it's just these two things but can you imagine but yet it's the two things 
that's missing the most in wow. the world in wow. people's lives. Go ahead, go interview people. Say, hey, do you believe that everybody accepts you as you are? Are you gonna get a yes? Do you believe that you're making the difference that you wanna make mm. in this world? Mm-hmm. Are you gonna get a yes from how many people, right? But two things, really easy. And even if you just, it doesn't even matter if you're in doing a job that you don't really like. Because you can make a difference with the people around you. And I, that reminds me of a client I had, by the way, who was a bus driver, a metro bus driver. Wow. But she always had this dream of working with numbers and trading and investments and stuff. She just has a financial inclination or gift or talent or interest. So while I was working with her, she was trying to transition for being a bus driver and she was a single mother mm. as well so she had a child two or three year old child a young child to take care of transition from bus driving over into trading she's doing phenomenal now i mean it's crazy wow. it's crazy but even when she worked with me for 30 days i kid you not between by the time we that 30 days was up that initial 30 days she already had 28 people on her team 28. Oh my gosh. Oh yeah. my gosh. And now she's not, of course, on bus duty anymore. She's left that behind. But um, yeah, it's extraordinary. Incredible. Yeah, it's it's extraordinary. So she, um, but it's interesting because she was making a difference even before she moved over to this other job. And we talked about that. She's in this job probably most people don't even want as a bus driver and she said everybody all, the people that come on there are just so kind and nice and and the people I work with at, at the station you know at the office and everybody gathers around me and they gravitate to me and they said that I just give them so much positive energy they just wow. like I'm like the sunshine for them you know I warm their spirit and I give them that you know that sustenance for the soul and she's got quite an entourage of people who gravitate to her so she's making wow. a difference she's making a huge difference just by who she's being mm. and the guy that works at Trader Joe's near me and he gives out the tickets and then at the end the last half hour he tells everybody you don't need a ticket you can park because you know we're about to close and then there's a lady, and I witnessed it myself, driving out, giving him a $20 bill. And he's like, what? I can't take this? What's this for? What? And she said, I insist. You must. You must have it. Wow. He looked at me and said, why? Why is she giving me this? I said, it's because of who you're being and because of the difference that you made in her life. Wow. Because the difference that you made. He goes, yeah, but she was only shopping here for like five minutes. I said, that's not the point. They valued They that's, valued it this. It wasn't about quick shopping trip it wasn't about parking without a ticket because that's what you do at the end of the night right it was because of who you're being the difference you made the contribution that you made to this person's life and by the way this guy's got an entourage too because every time i go shopping there's always some customer talking to him you're and telling me how people bring in gifts and all this stuff for me. And every time I drive in, he's reading a book like Dale Carnegie or, you know, some kind of what oh, is neat. this, li- you know, philosoph- philosophical book. Or He's always, always, and he's told me this himself, trying to just become a better person, to live life fully. And he says, you know, I never think about the past I don't get nostalgic I just stay in the present and I think of my inspiring future that I'm that I'm moving into that I'm walking into that I'm living into oh that's great because we talked about that one time I said do you ever get nostalgic or do you ever you know get uh, sad for anything that's maybe gone away or this and that or any losses whatever no absolutely not because I just don't go there I let all that go there's no point in really reflecting or hanging out there and I get it 
And I know what he's saying. I'm sure it's not like he has amnesia. I'm sure he thinks about the past. He just doesn't dwell on it. Doesn't yeah. hang out there. And that's the problem that that we have here. Where does depression come from? It comes from the past. Where does the anxiety come from? It comes from the future. How many people are suffering from depression and anxiety? Because why they're thinking about the past and the future? Never in the now. You know, when I work with clients, I have this little exercise to get people really profoundly related in reality and in the moment. So I say, you know, just take a look around. Just look around. Notice things. No judgment, no opinion, no criticism. Just notice it. If it's a picture, you might say, oh, you know, it's a picture. Gold frame, three trees in the picture, green grass, photograph. Got it. Move on to the next thing. Lamp. Orange lamp. So just see things with no meaning. Meaningless. Absolutely. They're just there. Just observe it. Right. Without criticism or judgment or, or anything, right? No story, no nothing. Just see it in its entirety. Exactly. No meanings. Do this for about one, two, three minutes, however long you want to do it. And then notice what's there. And I bet you what you're going to notice is like, first of all, ask yourself, is there anything wrong? And you know, no, I'm just sitting here noticing things. Good point. That's reality right there. That's a reality check. That's mm-hmm. right. There's nothing wrong because you're just sitting there noticing things. Is there really anything wrong? Absolutely not. They are related profoundly in the moment. You're going to see reality for what it really is. And then you're also going to notice how peaceful and calm everything is. How calm and just serene and quiet, slow, which is not the world that most people live in. Mm -hmm. But that's reality. And we're so disconnected from it. So do this little exercise and it really helps us to to have that uh, experiment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's an experiment to discover something. That's cool. That's a good way to do it. The madness that we always live in versus the reality of what's really going on. And we get to A-B it. And there's a big, you know, there's an opportunity for a big awakening right there. It's great because that's your through your observations and what you, you what you've you've learned. You're offering people, um, you're giving people permission to try this experiment that they would not normally have ever thought of trying out, or even feeling that they might have secretly wanted the permission to do. <laughs> you know, it's like it's like when you. It's like when you learn the answer to a question that you never asked, and you're like, well, wow, I just learned that, and I never realized I had the question, but you just gave me the answer to a question I never realized I had. You know, it's like one of those yeah. kinds of things. And by you saying that, you're offering people that opportunity to go, hey, here's an option that I bet you never even had, be- that you never even thought that you had before. Yeah. You can look at this as meaning, as just whoop, blank slate, and go ahead and do that and try it. And I bet you that that has definitely opened up a lot of eyes for people. Right? Just be generous and give yourself three whole minutes. Imagine that and perform this experiment. Three minutes. Today's world, that's actually being really generous with ourselves. Oh, my gosh. When you think about, like, what do people do in those spare moments? They're, like, checking their Facebook and texting and fiddling with this and driving a car or Mm -hmm, whatever mm -hmm. so imagine just putting everything down giving yourself a whole three minutes of performing this exercise and what a breakthrough would happen you know that could come from it so i say go for it you know you deserve it you gotta be generous more generous with yourself after all what's more important than your life that's true that's true ladies and gentlemen be generous with yourself, okay? Be generous with, with uh, giving yourself that three minutes and just uh, observing things. We're going to have Sterling in the studio. Uh, 
That's the fifth, I believe. I think that's the Monday. Let's see. Fifth. We're going to have Sterling and Blythe Baines, who's also uh, big into synchronicities. She puts it into her music. And uh, that's going to be so exciting to be hanging out in the studio with these two magical um, women who just conjure up very, very exciting things in their reality experiences. And we'll be sharing that with you. So tune in for that. There's a riff idea that came to me as I was walking to the subway. So Paul and I are standing on a bridge right now in Santa Monica. We are on the California mm-hmm. Incline. This is, this is uh, the California Incline. In one direction, there seems to be uh, coagulations. On the other side, well... It's starting to build up on both sides. It's starting to build really. up on both sides, both people yeah. People doing hairy, hairy maneuvers on the yeah. PCH. Yep, there's a U-turn right there. Wow. I saw it. Someone went from going north to flipping a B on the PCH and going south. This one might do a V-turn. They look like they're about to really do a sharp one. Oh! There's, it's go, the traffic's going to and fro. Ooh, I don't, you can't going. see this in radio land, but... You can't see it's, this in radio it's, land. It's, it's, it's just a free-for-all. Like, first come, yeah. like, you just gotta be... This is actually like a, a, a hypnotic moment in time. There's no telling who's inside one of those, any of Anybody. those. Where they're going, where they're coming from. What their what background their, is. What their background is, what they're thinking about. Whether they got animals at home, whether they got kids, wives. Kids uh, in the car. Whether they Ooh, got kids in the car. There's one person in a convertible oh, yeah. Mustang right there by herself. Oh, yeah. Hanging out. Hanging out in the convertible today. Silver convertible Mustang with the top wow. down. It's a beautiful, balmy 72 degrees on the... Yeah. Uh, Santa Monica coast. Actually, we're in Malibu right now, aren't we, right? I'm getting a call. Oh, is this? This is might be Malibu. Oh, he's getting a call. Uh, this is Ch- This is Party Paul Productions. How may I help you? No, I don't have it. Where's the... No, I don't have the shit. Do you know where the safety protocol is, Tony? It's... I'm hoping the manuals are... Uh, Wherever the manuals are. Back in the are. files are. Back in the files. <laughs> I do not have it, No. Put them in the file cabinet if they okay. if they can find it. Yes. So that safety protocol has been saved. Brought to you by Chaz and Party Paul Productions. Uh, Baba Booey. Baba. Baba 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 Yaba. Baba Booey. Baba Booey. Each and every single one of these people has an intention and a mission to go. Should we continue our, we continue our journey? Our mission. We're going for a walk through through a an. Well, for me, an undiscovered path. For Paul, he's something he's done before. And this is a beautiful path. I got to tell you, I never... We're going I, up there. I've never been up these things, these little bridge things. This is cool. Yeah, this is uh, quite a uh, unique spot in the Southern California region. Wow. Um, it is a unique spot. There are people going from the Third Street Promenade. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, following this path, this bike path share the the road that we we're passing these these letters that are you know, etched upon share the share the path on the path and what a picture. considerate look what a considerate thing there's a person a human and then we got a i'm going to try to take a photo of you while i'm doing a podcast okay here we go what i love is that they have this consideration to say here share the or please path share oh share path path share oh there he is yeah oh you know what i'll do i'll do a boomerang of this thing i'll do a boomerang of this thing of you getting up yeah. Oh my god, that's great. That's great. All right, hold on a second. Let me get the boomerang. Ideally, ideally we could still do this while it's Oh god, that would be great. Okay, ready? All right, hold on. Ready and go. <laughs> okay. 
No. It's like you're peeling yourself off the ground. Oh, there we go. There we go. All right, here we are. Wow, it's still recording. Okay, that that's cool. That's cool to know that's a possibility. So we're going upstairs right now. Um, I would I would invite anybody who's listening to this who lives in California or who's planning on visiting California. Paul, what, what would be the best instructions to give these people in case they want to go up the same path that we're going? 40, 405 South to the 101 PCH. Um, well, you know, it's a very exclusive beach club that we've parked at, so probably the easiest... The easiest public route is park along the beach. Oh. Up, take the California incline up to the Third Street Promenade parking. Oh. And then you can walk down. Oh. You go to the beach that's along. You'll see because we're going to get up there on this path. We're going to walk our way up to the top and you'll see where we're going to be. We're going to be on. You. you are not kidding. The Santa Monica Promenade. Overlooking the beach from the California incline. Wow. It's quite a walk. I love these spirals. I got to get a photo of these spirals. When you look at it from up here, it is it's just amazing. The spirals here are like, it's, it's, like, it's like artwork of some sort. You see all of the seafaring vessels. Like, it's cool. You see the spirals. That's great. The spirals are so cool. That's awesome. You want some mocha cores? Oh, yes. There we go. We've discovered that um, this uh, coffee, special... Coffee and beers. This, this coffee beer hybrid is delicious. Mm. You know, because a lot of what you drink or eat has a lot to do with your olfactories. And I think what's great is when I first took a sip of that, I could smell what I thought was like vanilla or something. Um, and I'm like, hmm, interesting. I, you know, or like a root beer or something. It just had this other, like a little extra something uh, that I did not expect it to taste in, in beer. And then I took a sip and I expressed that to Paulie and he said he had coffee in there earlier. And so I'm thinking maybe that's the ideal way to make the coffee, you know, because they make the coffee beer. And uh, there are various tastes involved with those. This is a really good version good of, hybrid, I of think. that hybrid. It is. And it was accidentally stumbled upon. Man. You know, that's the way a lot of these great inventions happen. The, by that seemingly accidental stumble upon. David Lynch always talks about the happy accidents. He looks forward to the happy accidents. He loves the happy accidents. And if something technical goes strange or unexpected, he embraces it and then he uses more of it. And so there's always this... Alexander Graham Bell. Uh, there you go. Alexander Graham Bell, Nikolai Tesla, all these wonderful... Uh, oh, this is where it ends up at. Yep. That's crazy. Isn't it? Okay, okay, good. I'm getting well, my... Uh, describe it to radio later? Okay, okay, okay. So let me think. If it's still there, there's a cannon. Um, if you're... Okay, if you're... look. Uh, if you're... Okay, okay. The pier... The pier is kind of near in the area where the cannon is. And so um, if you walk from the pier area, the cannon era area, and you go, what would that be? North. This is one of the rare occasions you're probably going to hear me use um, uh, like north, south, east, west type, type things. Uh, my navigation is, is just not the best, and it's not to say that it can't, it can't improve. It will. It, it's, it's improving all the time. So there's the pier, and let's say you go north, walk north, walk north, walk north, and then you're going to come to like a restroom area where people could go to, to the, you know, go to the bathroom, wash their hands and whatnot. And right next to that, and if they still have these by the time you get here, there's a little spot over here like a bicycle rack, except these are scooters. And by the way, I know I've been talking about scooters a uh, you know, a fair amount lately because um, I've been putting the, the Yachtly Crew stickers on there. This is an Uber, and also I saw a Lyft one. Now Metro is trying to get their own kind of thing. And uh, it's funny when you see that kind of thing. When, when, when one company 
when they see that one company is doing good with this idea and they say, oh, well, that's working. Let me adapt it. Let me, let me do, let me do that myself. And when that happens, um, you know, you, you then have all these people who are, are making their versions of what that thing was that you invented or that you started. And so, um, I think that's where people get this idea of, uh, what, oversaturation or something. Uh, I like to think if you just just keep going down your path and you create what you're creating, it, 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 the thing, it takes care of itself. It takes care of itself. Excitement is the thing. Ooh, okay, okay. I'm standing up here and I see the Jonathan Club. I see where our stage is. Oh, God, this is great. This is great. Wow. Um, I don't know if this is going to continue recording. If I go to... uh, If I go to... Instagram or not. Um, Let's try it. If it cuts cuts me off, it was worth it. Because we'll come right back. We'll come right back. I just want to show the... the, uh, So you can actually go onto my story if you're listening to this... And I do this fast enough, you could actually look at my story. All right, so. Okay, folks, this is where Yachtly Crew is going to be playing. I'm way up here uh, in the mountains. That's the Jonathan Club, okay? That's the stage where Yachtly Crew is playing. Look where we're at. We're up here in Santa Monica. And uh, wait a second. Look at There's Polly Shores just walking, to, walking, walking along. Who would have thought? Who would have thunk it? Look where we are. Look at this. Look where we're at. All the way. Look, there it is. Way over there. There's our stage. There it is. There's a, isn't that crazy? We could see it in the distance. I love this. I'm kind of zoomed in on it pretty good. And then when I zoom out, you could really see the entire expanse of it. You know, it's interesting. Everything is all about perspective, isn't it? Because right now, they just look like little ants. It's not that big, but when you're in there and you're walking around, it seems big. So it's all about the perspective. And it uh, it does it does seem to be a sprawling community that takes up a lot of the beach. A lot of beach goers out there. Oh, I do, you, do I see a ship in the distance? Is that a yacht? Hold on. Is that a yacht? Oh, boy. Now, wouldn't that be something if that yacht happened to drive past real slow like that? Well... We were playing Yacht Rock. It'd feel like it was like a personal soundtrack for them or something. Where do they go? Wait, I'm trying to find these guys. There they are. There we go. There's our yacht buddies. We are still, are we still recording? Oh my God, are we still recording? This is so good. The podcast still still recorded. We're still on in Radioville. I Ville. love it. Radioville is still happening. Man, what... What an incredible journey we've taken. We are now uh, about 100 feet above the Pacific Ocean, overlooking some of the most beautiful expanse of the Southern California beach line. I mean, it's, it's, it's miraculous out here, people. There's the sun setting upon the Pacific Ocean. Um, people just soaking <laughs> in the, the energy from the sun, Mother Nature the day man can you believe this day we, we're, we're all so lucky to be alive oh man this is our third time playing for these guys i mean i'm still astonished that we even played for this kind of thing once and it's just you know these are the things that i think you know it was funny because we'd, we'd play around with these ideas and keep playing with the idea that at some point we're gonna play for a yacht club at some point we're gonna play on a yacht at some point we're gonna play on a beach you know these kinds of ideas like okay here we are in a yacht rock band what would be the best kind of venues for that kind of for that kind of vibe? And it's sure enough, we're getting hired by these kind of companies to do this stuff, and it just blows my mind. Like you were saying earlier, what Del Coronado? Yeah, Del Coronado Island. Yeah, that's right, man. That was is, uh... that was amazing to play at Del Coronado and walk through that place and realize the history that was involved with that place. So many, so many uh uh specters from our past yes linger in that place i mean yeah um some like that Let's see what this does it's got a riff that's been in my head i 
Projecto Radio, Man Behind the Machine here. Say, have you used that new face app, putting in your photo, making you look older? Or if you haven't, have you seen other people using it and posting on social media? What are your thoughts about it? On the new episode, we've got 37 minutes of the terms and conditions read by our machine. Uh, what do you think uh, the implications are for society, for privacy? For artificial intelligence. Be curious to hear what you think of Face App. I am here uh, waiting for my sister Jenny. We're, we're going up to see the B 52s tonight. And she had to do a quick dog walking assignment 15 minutes. So I'm hanging out here in the car, podcasting, and uh, I have about uh, what, about five minutes. I figure I fill up five minutes. I I like to make about one hour episodes. Is that necessary? Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? Uh, so man behind the machine. That's an awesome question about the face app. I did not do that. The old, where they make you look like an old person. Oh, by the way, first of all, let me just talk about this interesting synchronicity. I'm outside of a um, an address here, and it starts with three two one. Well, three two one. My, uh, I grew up on three two one Arrowhead Trail in Carroll Stream, Illinois. Three two one Arrowhead Trail in Carroll Stream. And here we are at 321. Pretty crazy. I just happened to pull up to this place with my sister. <laughs> I mean, this is brilliant. That's going to be awesome, see B-52s. Uh, no, I didn't do the face app thing where they make you look old. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what made me decide against it. Um... I'm glad that you put up those terms and conditions of the uh, face app stuff on the Man Behind the Machine podcast because that then lets people know at least um, what they're in for if they decide to do the face app thing. Uh, I, I've... I, I, I don't know. It's crazy. I get squeamish when, when I see the... Uh, when you look at... When you download an app and it says, okay, we have, we can contact your, con- we can, you know, utilize your contacts, we can uh, make updates on your behalf, we can do all this stuff, and then we just go, okay, here you go, here's access to all my private stuff within my phone, and then we hear about how those companies might be able to hear us through those apps, and if that's the case, well then, you know, the way that voice technology works these days, and the way that they can just type out your, like Siri, things like that, where they can figure out what what you're actually saying and then how it how it um types out uh and then we wonder how is everything so well marketed towards us how how come these things are popping up on facebook that are so closely you know i just had a conversation about that the other day with someone and then bam here's this thing and then end up finding you know behind the closed doors that somehow this company is connected with these companies which is owners of these apps and so it's just it's so intriguing how it all unfolds 
and I try not to download apps that want to take too much of my information. I I think I'd I would say before downloading an app, it probably would be a good idea to really truly at least at least look in the Google machine and put that on there and say what are these safe apps? What what's safe? What you know? I want to do a safe video editing app, or I want to do a safe face altering app. Uh, what's what's not going to uh, get me with malware? What's not going to have all these tracking devices, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera. Um, I think I had a podcast about that. The, the tracking, the tracking devices that all those little trackers and tracers that come through these websites and the way that they can really gather all of this information and they have secondary and third, you know, tertiary and subsidiaries and affiliations and associates and it goes all the way down the line. All these people now, because this company owns all those, it goes, goes all the way through. Now they all have access to your stuff. It's such a, it's such a weird thing because then, you know, there can always be that excuse. Well, they already know all my information anyway, so I might as well download this. Yeah, I might as well do that. Might as well get this happen. But I mean, it's str- it, it's it's interesting how something that w- is so valuable and so precious, one minute or one year, can then all of a sudden now become a, you know, something that's destroyed the next year, or 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 something that was like okay, that's kind of off bounds now. Now all of a sudden the next year it's normalized and now it's okay now. It, it's it's interesting how that sort of social conditioning happens to us. It happens very subtly. It's like that. It's that phrase, nickel and diming. When you hear people go, "Oh, geez, you're nickel and diming me." Well, what does that mean? You're taking little bits and little bits and little bits, and then you know you might. It's like like abusive relationships or what have you. It's like, oh well, I'll just excuse him this time. Oh well, I'll just excuse him this time or that time. It's like being in a bad job. Oh, I'll, I'll excuse them this time. I'll excuse them that time. But then, little by little, they're taking a little bit more, a little bit more, and they're encroaching more and more, either on your boundaries or chiseling more into maybe a momentum that you have going on. Um, which is all the more reason to, to, to align yourself with collaborative individuals. People understand the ensemble spirit. Um, all for one, one for all. There's not some secret backdoor slimy, you know, things going on um so to get back to that question about the face app no i haven't downloaded it um uh i have something called face what is it called face switch or f- something face swap i got i got downloaded that a while ago i love that one because it's you can turn your face into all kinds of different stuff you can i mean you could draw a picture and then draw it out on your face now you become this picture it's it, it, it's it's crazy. Um, I've done quite a few on here. Uh, on uh, if you look on the Inspirato Projecto Instagram, like I made my there's a lion. I made my face into a lion. There's gorillas. There's you know all kinds of cool stuff. John Travolta. There's I mean you can actually search online and they'll bring up pictures of these people and you go okay that's the one and you can actually draw your mouth. They will actually let you draw the certain spots where your face, where your eyes, where your nose, everything matches up with that photo. So it just helps better enhance when you're talking how that's going to fit on the face. So it's it's just crazy with the technology. So. Um, Thank you for your message, and uh, please call in, call in and, and leave more. Leave lots more. I also want to make a quick addendum to the face app thing. I want to say I think it's awesome. <laughs> it's funny seeing these folks with the looking old. It's it's interesting because it makes me wonder the intricacies of the programming involved in, in, in figuring out how the how the wrinkles would be. Uh, um, how the hair like like the how the hair turns gray how the how the smile lines would look um that just, that just, it just blows my mind also i think that's the same one where the ladies can look like guys and the guys can look like ladies it was funny to see um sailor hawkins from yachtly crew he sent a photo and it was of himself as a woman and then my sister jenny sent me something where she looked like a guy and she had this beard it was so funny to see these abilities now that we have with these apps to be able to alter the appearances. I mean, such that the people are going in and getting 
uh, surgery on their faces, plastic surgery on their faces, so they look more like the apps, or more like the, uh, what do you call it, the, the filters on uh, Instagram, for instance. Uh, so what you're about to hear is at the B-52 show. It's called the Triple Threat Tour. B-52's OMD in Berlin. And Dina Korda, who was the manager of the band I used to be in, this Duran Duran tribute band called Rio, she was the manager. And uh, she's a geologist. So I got to meet these geologists. I mean, how often can you say that you even know someone who's a... a ge- well... How often can you even say that you know someone who knows someone who's a geologist? How, can, how often can you actually say that you actually know a geologist? So this is really quite a surprise to see um, that, you know, just how just bizarre that situation was to know, oh, my God, you know, here, here's a geologist uh, with geologist friends and they get this booth at the Microsoft Theater, and, um, and, uh, here's the, here's the ticket here. Yeah, Microsoft, uh, Microsoft Theater used to be called the Nokia Theater. 40th anniversary tour, B-52's OMD Berlin. So so interesting. So they get these little these little booths, so to speak, up in a balcony there, and it's pretty close. You know, I mean, it's it's crazy how close it is to the stage. And there are great screens up there and everything. You can actually see um, in my story. I'll, I'll I'll also upload a piece of Rock Lobster, which was great. I'm not going to give away anything, but that's going to be on the uh, Instagram, the, my uh, the Inspirato Projecto Instagram page. So what you're about to hear here is Love Jack. So I'm going to end off the episode with this for you to hear. It's not the entire song, but it's a really interesting little twist. You'll see. So thank you so much for listening to Inspirato Projecto, and we will be back again next time, if not before.